seniors and disabled homeowners face. By raising the maximum income level of the senior citizens' homeowners' exemption and the disabled homeowners' exemption to $58,400, tens of thousands of additional New Yorkers will be able to qualify for a property tax break of up to 50% and fewer seniors will be forced to choose between paying bills or paying for basic essentials. I want to thank Mayor de Blasio for his collaboration on this bill, as well as my state colleagues, Assemblymember Brian Kavanaugh and Senator Diane Savino for their part in passing this legislation on the state level. I encourage my colleagues to continue to vote in favor of Intro 1676. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And I vote aye. Eugene. Aye. Ferraris Copeland. I vote aye. Garodnik. Aye. Gentili. Aye. Gibson. I vote aye. Greenfield. May I ex briefly explain my vote? Yes. I just want to congratulate uh, the entire team, and it really was an amazing team effort, on the Midtown East uh, rezoning led by Councilmember Dan Garodnik along with the assist from the borough president, Gail Brewer, the outstanding land use committee staff. And uh, I really believe when folks ask, how is the land use process supposed to work? This is how it works. It's transparent. It was collaborative. There were 20 meetings. And the results uh, were really outstanding, including the uh, concession that the council member managed to secure from the deputy mayor, which is a $50 million initial investment to start improving the public spaces. So I want to thank all of them. I want to congratulate the speaker for her work here as well and for the project in her district. And I am pleased to vote aye and all, and we'll certainly miss Matt Gawab, who is uh, literally both a gentleman and a scholar. Thank you. Gordenchik. Uh, with my condolences to Steve Matteo on the loss of his father, congratulations to Lori Cumbo on the birth of Prince Noah. I'm happy to vote aye on all, and I want to thank all my colleagues uh, for voting yes on 1676, which will greatly ease the burden on many of my constituents in Eastern Queens. Thank you. Thank you. Kalos. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, the Stand for Tenant Safety Coalition is a citywide alliance of grassroots tenants organizations, the legal services groups who collaborated with city council and members of the Progressive Caucus worked hard to write a thoughtful package of legislation that takes on tenant harassment through neglect or never-ending construction. Under the current status quo, landlords with three or fewer units who have unpaid violations for explicitly hazardous conditions in their buildings can currently end up with a tax lien and have their properties transferred to a responsible landlord. Unfortunately, this leaves landlords of larger buildings able to neglect rent-regulated affordable housing in an effort to force tenants out by accruing thousands of violations that are deemed not hazardous, like holes in your walls or ceilings to make life a living hell without much recompense from the city. Chair of the Committee on Governmental Operations, I'm focused on ensuring that when city issues violations that landlords actually improve quality of life. If a landlord won't fix problems, then the city should step in and find a landlord who will. Introduction 931 expands the definition of distressed property from small buildings to apply to buildings of any size and sets a threshold so the city can use its foreclosure power to force landlords to make necessary repairs and pay or place the building into a third-party transfer program and hand them off to a responsible owner. Introduction 930 expands which violations can be counted towards a distressed property and subject to tax liens from just hazardous conditions to all quality of life violations like broken elevators, stairwells, boilers and radiators, as well as plumbing and electrical issues. This will finally mean that affordable housing can no longer go neglected without landlords being forced to pay and make repairs or turn the building over to the city and a responsible landlord. As Vice Chair for Policy of the Progressive Caucus, I'm proud we've made tenant safety a priority and nearly three years of advocacy were at the finish line. Thank you to Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito, Housing and Buildings Chair Jamani Williams for leading this council in support of our city's tenants, and of course to our tenants upstairs, to thank you for making this happen. I vote aye. Councilmember Johnson. Well, Madam Public Advocate, I'd like to explain my vote. <clears throat> yes. Uh, despite all the progress our city has made in curbing smoking, tobacco use kills an estimated 12,000 New Yorkers a year. In the United States, smoking is responsible for about one in five deaths annually or 443,000 deaths per year. This is unacceptable. 
The package of legislation that the Council is voting on today will result in thousands of fewer New Yorkers getting hooked on tobacco, and I understand the difficulty of that, and will incentivize thousands more to quit. My bills would establish a 10% tax on tobacco products other than cigarettes, the proceeds of which will be directed to public housing, as well as increasing the minimum price for a pack of cigarettes from $10.50 to $13, and, an in and increasing the fee for a license to sell cigarettes from $110 for a two-year license to $200. From taking tobacco products out of pharmacies to limiting the number of licenses issued, this package of bills would undoubtedly save tens of thousands of lives. As someone who struggles personally with nicotine addiction, I know firsthand the grip that this substance can have on our lives. I also know that together we can loosen its grip and win this battle against big tobacco. I'd like to thank the Speaker and my colleagues in the Council for their creative and encompassing solutions within this package of legislation. Commissioner Dr. Mary Bassett and the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene for being an exceptional partner in our work to improve the lives of our citizens and to Mayor de Blasio for leading our city and our country in progressive policies that favor people over products. I want to thank Councilmember Lander, Torres, uh, Richards, uh, Vaca, Cabrera, and uh, am I leaving anyone else? Gentili, anyone who had a bill in this package. And in my last 15 seconds, I want to thank everyone for working on this package of legislation for tenant safety. It's a huge issue, issue in my district. We needed to pass these bills. It's a very big win, and I proudly vote aye on all items on the agenda today. Thank you. Thank you. Ku. Um, may I explain? I explain my vote? Yes. Uh, Madam Public Advocate. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, I'm a pharmacy uh, owner, I will be abstaining from uh, intro 1131B, and the rest I will uh, vote yes. Thank you. Lanceman. I on all except 1471A and 1544B. Thank you. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Uh, I want to follow Chair Johnson and thank him uh, in celebrating this package of bills, which will really save thousands of lives. We're doing a lot of important things in this council this summer. Uh, but this package of bills, I believe, will save tens of thousands of people's lives in the year to come by helping people quit smoking and making sure more young people don't start. My two bills in the package aim to reduce the number of places that tobacco products are sold because substantial data shows that young people are far more likely to start smoking when there's ready access in places that they frequent. 1131 will prohibit the sale of tobacco products in pharmacies. Uh, the overwhelming number of independently owned pharmacies do not sell tobacco products, and none of them uh, came here asking us to change this bill. CVS has stopped selling it, so we're really talking about big chain drugstores helping people get hooked on something that will kill them. Uh, 1547 will over time reduce by half the number of retail outlets that sell tobacco products, and I want to be clear, we worked very closely with bodega and retail and small business owners and franchisees to make sure that they would not be harmed, that if they're in good standing, they can transfer their licenses when they sell their businesses. We actually had a wonderful meeting with the, Bo the Yemeni Bodega Owners Association who came together after the, the, the Yemeni bodega strike. Uh, and as a result of changes we made to this bill uh, and the help of Dr. Debbie Almentasser, they're supporting the package. So we're doing something really very powerful here. Uh, big thank yous to Dave Seitzer for tremendous work on this legislation, to Commissioner Bassett and Assistant Commissioner Sam Miller, who's here with us, um, to my policy director, Annie Levers, for a lot of good work on this package, and also to tremendous advocates for American